اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session I'm going to focus on how to validate a higher order reflective formative construct. In this example internal marketing is our higher order construct that is formative at the second level that is the higher level and reflective at the lower level. Organizational performance is my other dependent variable measured at lower level. Now the first step always is when you have a higher order construct is to validate your construct at the lower level. Now you cannot directly jump onto the higher level. You have to first cross the lower level and here crossing means that you have to check the reliability and validity of your lower order constructs. Now in this case, I've used the word reliability because all my lower order constructs are reflective. So I have vision development rewards and organizational performance as reflective at the lower level. Now the first step, add these lower order constructs to your canvas. Here they are vision reflective, development reflective, rewards reflective, organizational performance reflective. The first step is to validate your lower order constructs. How to do this? Go to calculate, PLS algorithm, path, all other checks out, start. The first step, auto loadings. Have a look at your auto loadings. All good. Next step. Check your alpha values, reliability values, all good, your convergent validity. Now all of this checks out the next step, discriminant validity. Look at the HTMT, all green. Look at the final locker criterion. This value here that is within construct variance, that is variance within development must be higher than the shared variance. That is the correlation of development will, with all the other constructs in this study. Now there are detailed videos on construct validity, discriminant validity on the channel. You can watch those to understand the concepts of different forms of validity. The objective of this session is to validate and report higher order reflective formative construct. Now this is step one. How do you report this step one? Now I've got an example here, not necessarily based on this data, but you start with the measurement model. Explain what is your measurement model. The next, you present your factor loadings. So the factor loadings range between minus one to plus one. And in your case, all of them were over 0.5 and you simply copy them into Excel sheet here. Let's say this is my Excel sheet. So you can just go to the output, go to your outer loadings, get them in Excel format, paste them in Excel and bring them to your Word document. Obviously change the decimal points for uniform formatting. Go to right click format cells number and I prefer three press. Okay. Now simply copy them here and describe what you have done with factor loadings like this. Now, once you are done with factor loadings and you have reported in a table like this, the next step is look at indi indicator multicollinearity. Where is your indicator multicollinearity? If you have a look here. This is your indicator multicollinearity. All of them less than five. All good. You simply copy them to Excel format, put them in Excel. And from there, you can bring it into your Word document and paste it like this. And this is the text you can write to describe your VIF values. Now, the next step, reliability analysis of the lower order constructs. How to do this? Just simply write the heading, briefly describe the concept of reliability and see if the reliability is over 0.70 that is both cron batch alpha and composite reliability. Yes, they are. So reliability is established. In this case, you can report it like this. So your table, your caption for the table, your constructs and their respective alpha and reliability, composite reliability values. Next, your construct validity that is convergent and discriminant validity. First step, convergent validity. What is convergent validity, how it is established and whether it was established in your case or not. In this case, yes, it was established because here, have a look here. All over 0 0.50. And finally, get your discriminant validity analysis. Here it is. First, describe what is discriminant validity, Farnan and Locker criterion. That is the within construct variance here. This value here, 
must be greater than shared variance. And if that's the case for each one of them, your discriminant validity is established according to Fornell and Locker criterion. But preferably, you should focus on HTMT. All these values, less than 0.85, that is a more conservative measure. You can have a more liberal approach that is less than 0.90. And yes, if that's the case, Fondal and Locker criterion, cross loadings, you can do that as well. And then HTMT, less than the required threshold, all good, reported like this. Now, video on each of these concepts will be shared in the description if you want to know more about the, the about what is discriminant validity and more details about it. Now that you have reported your reliability and validity for all the lower order constructs, now this is actually subdimensions of a higher order construct that is internal marketing. And they actually form the higher order construct that is they are formative at the higher order level. Now the next step is to validate this particular construct made up of vision development rewards that is your internal marketing at a higher level. Now how to do this? You cannot do it like this. First step, go to your PLS algorithm, get your latent variable scores. Here they are. Now they will have the same sample size like num the same number of cases 341, 341 here. Just copy it into Excel format, open your data set. Now this is my data set. Here it is. Here is my data set. I'm going to go to the end of my data set and simply paste it here. I've already done this. Now, once you paste it, you have to import this file again. How do you import it? Just right click it. Obviously, make sure you have saved this. You have saved this file. Now, right click, import data file. So you simply open it and let's say I name it LVS. Now, once that is done, your data is imported and look at this, the, your latent variable score for the variables in your model are here. Now, how do I validate my higher order construct? What I'll do is I'll create a duplicate for my model. Yes, and this is IM at higher order level, higher order construct. Now, I do not need these. So, I'll simply remove this. Now, this is disjoint two-stage approach. So, your internal marketing is made up of vision, development and rewards. And based on your first level, you created or generated latent variable score for each of these construct and then exported into Excel and brought it back into your smart PLS. Now, vision here, this is the latent variable score based on this particular latent variable and these indicators. Now, this vision here and development and rewards, these are now latent variables and the scores, we got them from the first stage when we generated or copied the latent variable scores. Now, this is the stage two. So, I'm just going to add these three indicators. Now, they have become indicators. Indicators for what? Indicators for internal marketing, which is a second order formative construct. Now, look at the arrows. They are pointing towards the indicator. Since it is formative, that is, these indicators form internal marketing. So, I have to change the direction. And here it is. Look at this now. This is formative. Now, this is a disjoint two-stage approach. Why am I saying this is disjoint? Because the lower order construct still has got its indicators. If I was to use embedded, I would have removed this one as well and used the latent variable score for OP. Now let's connect these two and I have to validate IM. The first step in validating IM is, look at this here. Step one in validating internal marketing as a higher order reflective formative construct involves a redundancy analysis. Now that helps in establishing convergent validity. In formative measurement model evaluation, convergent validity refers to the degree to which formatively specified construct, that is your IM, correlates with an alternative reflectively measured variable or variables of the same concept. Now, originally proposed by Chen in 1998, the procedure is referred to as a redundancy analysis. Now, to execute this procedure to determine convergent validity, researchers must plan ahead. This is very important. You have to plan well ahead in your research design. 
Why? Because you will need a global single item that captures the essence of internal marketing. Now in this case, I had a question in my questionnaire that covered or captured the essence of internal marketing. That single item read that organization has proper vision, has development initiatives and rewards its employees. Now that single item covers the essence of internal marketing. So I've got data on that global variable as well. And here it all suggests that correlation of formatively measured construct, this I am here formatively measured with the reflectively measured item or item should be 0 0.708. So is it 0 0.708 for the global construct? Let me remove this for now and let my let me add my global variable. Where is it? Here is my global variable. Let me add it. Put it at the end here. Now connect the two and calculate PLS algorithm and look at this path coefficient 0 0.800. This is well above 0 0.708. Now if it is over 0 0.708, this implies that the construct explains more than 50% of alternative measures variance. In this case, it is 0 0.800. So you have crossed the recommended threshold. There is no issue of convergent validity and convergent validity or redundancy analysis shows that there is convergent validity. How to report this? I've got a table here. Higher order construct, IM, my lower order constructs and first step, path coefficient that is redundancy analysis 0 0.800. Now moving towards the second step. Look at the VIF values here and you need the VIF values for these three indicators of the higher order construct 2.605 and these all less than 5. Have a look here. VIF values less than 5 so no issue of collinearity. How to report them? Just simply write in VIF values here. Now once you have reported the VIF values and the path coefficient the next step is significance and relevance of outer weights. How do you assess the significance of outer weights? Well, you will have now have to run your bootstrapping procedure. So I'm going to remove this one here now that I've done with this. So let's add the OP back. Here it is. Now let's run calculate bootstrapping. And as you know, 10,000, 5,000 to 10,000 is suggested. But for now, I'm just going to stick to 500 for the sake of this video. And let's do one tailed, complete bootstrapping and let's run. Where are my auto weights? Here they are. Look at this. Auto weights. Vision development rewards. Rewards is insignificant. So if we look here. Vision development rewards, your rewards is insignificant. Shall I delete it? So when validating the higher order formative construct, let's look at the procedures for now. Here it is. So I've checked my collinearity diagnostics. No issues with collinearity. I'll move now. Moving on. I'll check my significance of outer weights. So are my auto weights significant? Yes, for two of the indicators measuring internal marketing, but not for the rewards. So what should I do? Shall I delete it? No. If your auto weight is not significant, look at the outer loadings. So how do you report it? You simply put them here, your auto weights. So you put your auto weights here with these statistics and p-values. So what you can do is just simply copy them in Excel format. Let me use them here, paste them here. And these are my outer weights. Copy and I simply paste them here. And simply you can copy the T statistics and P values. Where are they? Here are your T statistics and P values. I'm just going to right click, format cells, number, three decimal points. Okay. Simply copy them and paste them here. But now the issue is this outer weight here is insignificant. Shall I delete this particular indicator? No. Look at the outer loadings. Where are your outer loadings? Outer loadings. Look at this. Greater than 0.5 and significant as well. 
so you do not need to delete it so copy them in excel format and simply you can bring them let's say this copy and here it is paste now that you have reported your auto weights now you have reported your loadings as well and all loadings are greater than 0.5 since well most of the criterion is met you can say your higher order construct validity is established so this is how you can validate your higher order formative construct that is reflective at the lower level now you want to assess the relationship go to bootstrap path coefficients and look at this significant so internal marketing at a higher level has got a significant influence on organizational performance a quick recap so you start with your redundancy analysis and check whether the path coefficient is greater than 0.708 the next step look at the vif values look at the significance of outer weights and finally the outer loadings and this is the table to report the results make sure you refer to the table in the text as well i hope this session would have helped you understand how to analyze higher order reflective formative construct and how to report it thank you very much